Welcome to Paranormal Universe. Hello and welcome to Paranormal Universe. I'm Chris. And this is Tina. This is episode seven. Um, so yeah, that last episode was kind of funny. Did you like that episode? Yes, it was. I think I was being a little bit extra on that episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, it happens. I think I'm getting cabin fever. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> There's a special cabin for you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The cabin in the woods under the trees at night. Yeah, I don't want that cabin. Wishing scary cabins on me and shadow people and it monsters it doesn't have in the to be trees. Scary. It doesn't have to be scary. It could be a nice vacation. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so we have some uh, interesting stories for you today. Um, one of them is from, uh, I cannot pronounce this name. Probably going to butcher it, but it's D D E E W T. I can't. I can't pronounce that, but this is from D D W T. Let's just make it. Let's just say that. Um, so yeah, this is from D W T. <laughs> <laughs> when I was around sixteen, my grandma passed away. She lived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We always felt guilty about not being able to see her as much as we would have liked. It was an eight-hour drive. We only left Pittsburgh because my dad's job was transferred and it was an eight-hour drive away. On the day my grandma passed away, our dog randomly started looking up at the ceiling in the kitchen and started barking and whining. My dad and I both said, oh, wow, grandma's spirit must be here checking on us. The funeral was very nice. I remember my grandma raving about a beautiful new set of crystal drinking glasses she had gotten recently. So when we stopped by her house, where she'd been living alone, I asked my parents if I could take the set home. They said yes. We got home and the dog was back at it, barking at the ceiling or just whining. Sometimes days would pass and nothing. Sometimes it was annoying and happened multiple times in a day or a night. Me and my dad still had this comforting thought that it was just grim it was just grandma and it was pretty cool to be honest. The bathroom upstairs was above our kitchen and that's where the dog seemed to be barking at. My parents slept with their door cracked and the bathroom door open, which was across the hallway, with a nightlight in it. On several occasions, my mom, who was a skeptic of the supernatural, would wake up at night and see lights flickering in the bathroom. She thought the nightlight was dying and we got a new one. That is when the entire bathroom light started flickering on and off when she would wake up. Again, she figured out a rational explanation, electrical problems. I don't understand why she didn't find it odd that she only noticed it happening at night after she woke up from her sleep. She didn't seem to care or think about it. The electrician came out and says nothing was wrong with the wiring. The house was only a couple of years old. That's what got my mom to start paying attention. So my mom is sleeping and wakes up and the same thing happens. Lights are flickering in the bathroom, but she stayed awake this time and watched and waited. Then instead of flickering on and off, the entire bathroom light just stayed on. She waited a little while and then got out of bed and the bathroom light switch was flipped on. She flipped it off and returned to bed and fell asleep. The next day, she made it clear to the family to remember to turn the bathroom light off when we were done in there. Maybe she was still thinking the electrician missed something. So fast forward a few days and it's still happening. But the part that had my former skeptical mother now completely spooked was that the light switch would be down in the off position when she went to bed and turn back on in the upright position when they'd come on in the night. I got blamed a couple times for that. She thought I was flipping the switches on purpose to freak her out more, but I wasn't. A few days later, she could hear the light switch being flicked up and down loudly and obnoxiously, then stopping in the on position. She didn't go turn it off this time. She said it gave her a bad vibe, like something wanted her to go in there, almost like a setup or a trap. So we just closed the door at night and turned the light off. One night, I woke up crazy thirsty, and I went downstairs to get some water in my grandma's crystal drinking glass. The glasses had no stem or anything, just a standard cylindrical glass with a flat bottom. 
I feel it with room temperature tap water, which is relevant because what happened next could have been blamed on a swift temperature change, perhaps in the glass. As I'm walking with my cup of water, room temperature, and no ice, I pass underneath the bathroom, and the moment I do so, the bottom of the glass falls out and water is everywhere. When I say the bottom fell out, I mean that the bottom of the cup simply separated from the cup. It's perfectly separated. There were no glass shards, just a hollow tube of crystal I was now holding. What now looked like a crystal coaster was on the floor, and of course, water was everywhere. I cleaned it up and went to bed with another cup of water and one of our crappy plastic drinking cups. And yes, the upstairs bathroom door was closed, and I could see the light framing from the doorway. Those glasses meant a lot to me because they were hers. They belonged to her, so why would she do this? I almost cried. She told me that she wanted me to have them when she passed away, so I know she wouldn't have been mad that I took them home. The barking and whining, the light flickering, a light that had been turned off, then double-checked just turned back on, the loud persistent sound of the switch going up and down, the fact that these things were causing anxiety to my mom and making her already poor sleep even worse and ruining my crystal glass. There were no more events after my incident with the cup. I moved out a few years later, but they stayed there for 10 more years before moving without any other events. Why did this stop when my glass broke? Who or what decided to take temporary residence in our bathroom when my grandma died? Because that wasn't my grandma. What do you think about that? Yeah, I don't know who or what took up residence in that bathroom. Um, wow. The the thing that gets me is the uh the the glass. She said she, it was perfectly like. Yeah, it didn't break when it hit the ground. Yeah, and it broke perfectly. Um, no, no. it didn't shatter. No shards. No nothing. Just. Like something almost perfectly cut it. Like it was cut perfectly with like a laser or something and it drops. Yeah. That's, um, and she said nothing else happened after that. Yeah. I don't know. That, that's kind of weird. And then the mom didn't even believe in all that stuff and was getting freaked out with the light switch going off and on. Uh, it almost sound like poltergeist activity, but I don't know. It stopped. After it broke the glass, I don't know, it doesn't seem like there's like any type of consistency with whatever was going on. Like it wasn't consistent. It, it just it did all that stuff and caused all the problems that it caused. And then it broke a glass and disappeared. What if grandma was there and grandma broke the glass in order to get whatever was happening in the bathroom to stop? How, why, why would they break in a glass to get that to stop? Why would that I don't know. Maybe grandma had to break a prized possession, make a sacrifice in order to, to kill off whatever was in the bathroom. I don't know. That's an interesting take. Sorry, mommy. I, I mean, I don't know. It, nothing happened after the glass was broken. Yeah. And grandma loved the, the glass. And that's that, something to think about. Uh, um. Yeah, if it's it's if it's something that the grandmother loved and just mysteriously broke like that, there could have been a reason behind it. I was thinking maybe the grandma was like, don't be drinking out of my glasses. Oh, goodness. Get out of my glasses. You, you, you're drinking tap water out of my fine crystal? I will say this. Um, when my grandmother passed away, she had a fur coat, a uh, mink coat, and um, she would tell me before... She passed away. When I go, I want you to have this coat. And I was like, don't talk like that. I don't want you to talk like that. And she'd tell me all the time, I want you to take this coat. Don't, don't, don't forget. I want you to take this coat. And um, when she passed away, of course, they they made sure that they gave me the coat. And the coat stayed at my parents' house for a long time. And my mom, one day she decided she wanted to put it on. And she said she put it on just, you know, just to put it on because it had been sitting in the closet. And she said her shoulders started to hurt. She said she was fine, perfectly <laughs> fine. And she said all of a sudden her shoulders started to hurt while she was wearing this coat. And it hurt to the point where 
she got uncomfortable and she had to take the coat off. And as soon as she took that coat off, her shoulders were fine. Uh, My grandmother told me, don't let anybody wear that coat. <laughs> You're the only she one was, that's supposed to wear that coat before she passed she away. She's like, nope. Right. Get so, about my coat. I don't know. People, I think people are people attached are, to their, yeah. sometimes their items after they yeah. they pass away. And I'm thinking, I don't know. Something that, that they... Just my thought on it was maybe something was in that bathroom tormenting those individuals in that house. And I don't yeah. know, maybe grandma's way was, hey, I'm going to scare this thing off. Look at this. Look what I can do. Or maybe this what you theory. think you can do. Anything you can do, I can do better. Check this out. Bam. <laughs> well, no, or maybe my theory of grandma didn't like that <laughs> glass being used <laughs> to drink out of the tap. I, I don't know. It, it it it's 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 strange, but it, it's strange that it was just something that was connected to the grandmother. The grandmother was a prized possession of hers that was broken in the process of all this. But once that prized possession was broken, everything stopped. That's what's kind of throwing me off a little bit. It was like I, I don't understand how what happened to to make everything stop after that glass was broken. Yeah. And you know, it's it's kind of like I don't know, maybe maybe it was the grandmother, maybe it was whatever else was in the bathroom, but it it didn't sound um I don't know, it didn't sound like it was sinister, but at the same time, you know, I don't know. That that one kind of has me stumped there. Yeah, it does. It it really does. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you want to you want to tell Dee's other story? Yes, I will. All right, go ahead. Okay. So, Dee also is a nurse. Yay. And submitted one of my favorite type of stories. I worked at a small old hospital for a couple of years. Four floors, only two floors being used, and a small ER. I was a med surge RN working 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. That shift I love to hate. <laughs> med surge meant we had patients who had just had or needed to have surgery, and also patients who were just sick. Most of the patients were elderly and just sick with things like pneumonia, anemia, acute kidney failure, etc. When older folks get sick, they tend to get confused and might do or say things they normally wouldn't. But this, whatever the hell this was, was not cool. This was mortifying, and I'm the only one who heard it. We joked that because the hospital was so old that it was creepy, specifically on the right wing of our unit, and obviously at night. Guess who got the assigned, guess who got assigned the right wing that night? Okay, so I got bedtime meds ready for the old folks down there and started walking down the hall with my med cart and charts for each patient. I had received a report from the previous day nurse that room 214 was a woman called her Kathy, who was only 55 and in for pneumonia, completely alert and oriented. I give the patients down there their meds, one by one, and yeah, I'm tired and mildly annoyed that it takes room 216 over 10 minutes to swallow a plethora of pills one by one, then proceeded to pull out his IV that was delivering his antibiotics. I digress. So needless to say, it took me a little longer to get to room 214. She didn't seem upset, just tired. I did my assignment, and she was in fact oriented today time, name, location. I say goodnight after hanging another bag of fluids. I'm hanging out in the hall with my computer documenting my assessments, and I hear something that shook me. It sounded like whispering, but I heard more than one person doing it. I lifted my head up to hear better. I mean, it is night shift, and I'm tired, so I'm making sure I actually heard this. I followed the noise to the outside of Kathy's room. And there seems to be a full-blown, whispery conversation going on with multiple people. I couldn't make out what the different voices were saying, but it sounded like a chanting of some sort. I had to make sure I was legitimately hearing these whispers that seemed like they were coming from different people and try to make sense of it. I walked slowly past her door, which was slightly cracked open, hoping to hear things more clearly, 
The whisper chanting sounds only got louder and were still unintelligible. Kathy, who had been tucked in bed and dozing off when I saw her less than seven minutes ago, was now sitting straight up on the side of her bed, looking away from me at the wall. Doesn't sound that scary, right? Well, Kathy was unable to lift herself out of the bed without assistance during my assessment. Kathy was having labored breathing when I assessed her. Now, Kathy has pulled her nasal cannula out of her nose and sat up in in bed in less than seven minutes without struggle, and then she stood up, looking away. She turned and walked into the bathroom without seeing me. Because she was labeled a fall risk, she shouldn't be out of the bed alone. I saw her profile and her lips were not moving, but the whispers grew louder. I panicked, but kept my cool. I briskly walked to the nurse's station and asked if a nursing assistant could please help Kathy with the restroom. She sent the nurse's assistant <laughs> down there. <laughs> you go do it. <laughs> I'm not warning you about what's going on down there, but you go do it. Oh, I normally would do it myself, but I was rather busy. <laughs> she was rather busy trying to get that nonsense out of her head. And Kathy was doing quite well on her own. <laughs> yes, she was. I was sweating, freaking out, and getting further behind on my charting. The nursing aide helped Kathy and didn't report anything unusual when I asked how she was doing. I promise, I swear I heard those voices. They were loud. They were unsettling, to say the least. I requested the left wing as often as possible after that and eventually went on to work at a larger hospital. So you've never run into anything like that? Um, <laughs> not, no, no, I have not, not no. yet. Oh, man. Wait, but it was, she, she, she wasn't really that old, though, either. Was she, she said she's 55. Uh, 55, yes. Yeah. Kathy was only 55. Goodness. Just imagine seeing that, because are those rooms usually dark at night? Like, at night in the hospital, they, they have that little light over the bed. They're not completely dark in there. You have options. Okay. You can, you can, I wonder if Kathy's light was out. You can that turn would... that light off um, and make the room pretty dark if you, you know, you want to. So you, you can make that room dark. That would add to the scariness of the fact that the room was actually darker if it had that little light over the bed on. Actually, is that the light that I'm talking about? The little, it's the, like when they're when they're sleeping, it, it's it's a little bit more dim than the main light that's in the room. Is that is that over the bed? Yes, and that's what I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, that light. Yeah, if that light was um, if that light was on, then I I I don't think she would have been that afraid. I wonder if her room was actually dark, but she saw her. She she was able to see and tell whether or not her lips were moving. So maybe it wasn't completely dark. Yeah. That that may have been that who yeah that that's um i wouldn't be able to do it the whispering the whis oh whispers oh no 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 yeah i, I that's couldn't that's a no done for that. me she went ahead and got the that's why those those cnas are those cnas <laughs> those nurses assistants those yeah, that's are wrong. strong people that is wrong those people are heroes there is some strange <laughs> stuff happening in that room why don't you go in there and check it out yes you go in there and play with the ghosts. Uh, I'll stay out here. <laughs> that lady wasn't even. Um, she, you go see what the peasant. I, I don't. You go even. see what the possessed patient is doing, <laughs> and I'll stay out here safe. <laughs> um, yes, because Kathy was unable to lift herself out of that bed without assistance, and um, now and she's, she's up walking, up, walking, and, and there's stuff whispering, whispering around her, and her lips aren't moving while it's happening. Kathy's a ventriloquist. What if Kathy was a ventriloquist all along? Yeah, Kathy was a retired ventriloquist. That's what it was. She might have been. She might have been. She was a retired ventriloquist, and that's where the whispers were coming from. She she can master making noises without moving her lips. Uh huh. Got you. Got him. <laughs> Kathy was pranking you. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy was bored. She, Kathy said, I, I can't sleep. In that bed. I can't sleep. I'm ready to go home. I'm about to mess with these nurses. I'd do that. If I was a ventriloquist, I would put my voice in places it shouldn't be. 
I'm, if I, I could throw would. my voice, do you know? I would do so. I wish. Can you train to be a ventriloquist? I'm going to Google that. I want to be a ventriloquist now. I just got way off the subject, but thinking of Kathy being a possible ventriloquist that's scaring the nurses makes me want to do that. That oh that would be like my life goal oh my. to become a ventriloquist and 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 excel at at that craft. And when I'm old and I'm in a nursing home or assisted living, just mess with the nurses. You know what? Leave the nurses alone, please. <laughs> They, they they didn't do anything. You know my life plan for assisted living anyway. Mm-hmm. I already plan to be a bit of a handful. Hopefully I don't forget to be a handful. <sighs> Leave the nurses alone. They I, didn't do anything to you. I have goals. So, yeah. Now, that <laughs> night shift, I will tell you, that night shift is, that's why I don't, I don't work night shift. I praise every nurse that can work a night shift because something happens to my mind and my eyes at around 3.45 a.m. Never fails. 3.45 a.m. Something happens to me and my, my soul goes to sleep and my body is still trying to, to fight sleep and I get out. cross-eyed and I start <laughs> seeing things and I know it's not ghosts. I know it's just me going delusional because at 3.45 in the morning, something crazy happens to me. You, and then at 5 a.m., I'm okay again. But you know what? You have to pass meds, possibly give CPR. You have to manage staff. No. No. No, sir. Mm-mm. Not a good place for me to be. <laughs> so, no. And then you think, I'm, I'm thinking I'm seeing things walking up and down those halls. So, no. Mm-mm. You be in there scaring yourself. Yes, I, that's exactly what I do. I scare myself, and I, I, I may have actually seen something, but I wouldn't know. Because you scare I, yourself I've like I myself. scare myself when I'm walking under trees at night. Oh, goodness. <laughs> when I'm walking under trees at night, that's how I scare myself. Mm-hmm. I see things. See, in a facility, I would have to see something actually during the day to kind of sort of, or, you know, during my still lively hours <laughs> in order to believe it because I started seeing things after a certain hour when I'm tired. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, I can't, I can't do it. I, I would not be able to work. I, I did the third shift thing. I'm not, I'll never do that again. Mm-mm. But to work in a hospital, no. No. And I don't um, want to be in a hospital. I'm afraid of visiting people in the hospital after, after dark. I don't like it. I don't know. It has a strange feeling. I've been in hospitals before at night, mm-hmm. you know, right before visiting hours is over. And it just, it's got to creepy, especially even when you walk through the lobby and everything, you know, it's not that busy because it it's does. night. It's got, it's got a heavy vibe to it. It doesn't it does. feel right. Yep. When visiting hours, it's like that, that. that it's like the hospital is dead. That dusk and you're trying to <laughs> escape. Before yeah, the vampires come out. It's like the hospital is dead, like everybody has run away because they know what happens at night. And you're the only idiot out there that's <laughs> walking around like, I don't know. What, you know, you don't know what the deal is after dark here, but they do because they were smart enough to leave and your stupid ass is still in the hospital. That's can how you, I feel. Can you imagine what the scariest wing of the hospital has got to be? Chuck full of ghost story. The morgue. Yes. Yes. Of course. Yes. The morgue. <laughs> they don't even have to be ghost stories because, you know, bodies still make noises and do strange things after we pass away. So um, you, you have some individuals who work up there and they have great stories that aren't even... <laughs> if you work at a, in a morgue, stories. if you've worked at, in a morgue, if you currently work in one, if you work at a, a, in a even if you work as a, um, come on, help me with the word here, mortician, tell me. I want to know. I want to know what you've experienced and what you've seen. Because, you know, funeral homes have got to be hotbeds, too. Yeah. But, yeah, definitely the morgue. <laughs> yes. Definitely the morgue or any hospital, hospitals and nursing homes, assisted living places, places where people do die frequently. They have got to be Cemeteries. chock full of spirits and strange things. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so um, we definitely would like to hear from people who have 
uh, worked in these places or have been in these places or experienced things in these places, because I'm pretty sure there are a lot of stories out there about hospitals, nursing homes, assisted living, cemeteries. Did you work in a cemetery? I've never met anyone who's worked in a cemetery before. Have you? I actually have not. To I've think never, about it, no. Like, you you see, you, you know there's people that work there. I've never met someone who actually worked at a cemetery. Like, who? where where do these people go? Where do they <laughs> hang out? Do they have friends? Because, you know, all the people I've met in all the different states that I've lived in, I've never met someone who said, hey, guess what I do? <laughs> I work in a cemetery. You want to hear about it? I, I've never met anyone who's done that. You know what? I went to high school with a boy who wanted to be a mortician. Like, that was his dream. You know how you go to high school with people and I want to be a fireman, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a nurse. He wanted to be a mortician. You know, that. I mean, there are people that are like that. I mean, he must he must have a thing for the dead. He had a passion for it. He sure did. And he had a personality that was very unique. It matched that his job, his desired yeah. job matched his personality. It's kind yeah. of interesting. Sometimes there's people that just that's their thing. <laughs> that's their that's their life's calling. It, it but was for him. I still want to know who, how, and why works at a graveyard. Who who do do you wake up and just say, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go apply at that cemetery that I've been wanting to work at. I want to know who works there. So I can hear stories. They, they've got to have stories. I mean, do are do people work in cemeteries like at night, or is it only is a day shift job? Shift really. The grave is, really at the, at the yeah. Cemetery. Is that where is that where that term comes from? Graveyard shift. Overnight. Is it because shift? there's or is it because it kills you? Because <laughs> <laughs> it was killing me. <laughs> is that where that term comes from? The graveyard shift. Is there a graveyard shift? That it's that in cemeteries, or is it just all, all during the day? I mean, because I couldn't imagine you could, you could dig a grave at night, but why? <laughs> when you be able to see better during yeah, the day. Yeah. So maybe that term didn't. Maybe I don't know where that term came from. I'd like to know that. I'll probably Google that today. I don't have anything else going on. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of useless information in my head. That's. I'll just add that to the files of useless information. The the history of. Term graveyard yeah, shift. Yeah, yeah. You know me. I'll just I'll, I'll pop you. I'll, I'll pop up with some useless information, and you you look at me like, why do you know that? Because I get bored. I think about things and I Google it. You know, you you really look at me crazy when I explain to you my thought processes of why I looked it up. <laughs> yeah, because that's that that's equally as interesting as the answer that you obtain. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that was that was a fun uh those are some fun stories or some pretty scary stories. I like those too. Um yeah, so uh if you have any stories, please let us know. You can email us at um paranormaluniverse at gmail dot com. Uh you can follow us on Instagram at Paranormal Universe Podcast. Uh and also you can um find us on Facebook. We have links for everything in our episode description, so you won't have to go back and rewind this. Um, Tina, you got anything for them? Um, thank you for sending those stories in. They were great stories. Um, thank you all for listening. Yes, thank you for listening, and please, please, please stay safe. Stay safe.